everyone. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to be working on disassembling or deconstructing these books today so we can see how they're put together. This one, I do know what to expect. The rest of these, hmm, not so much. <laughs> so we're going to work on that today. I have been trying to find some more book pages and things, and I'm looking through my papers. And let me tell you, finding Christmas-themed papers that aren't uh, Santa Claus or pla uh, plaid is fine, but um, I don't know. I'm looking through what I actually have and I'm not super keen on it, so I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I've got some coffee dyed colored paper and um, a few other things, you know, like the ledger paper and the, and the usual kind of stuff. So I've been digging through trying to get more of those book pages pulled out just to see what I have. So that's what we're going to work on today. We'll see how far we get, and then I may just go ahead and roll into the next video for Friday. At the end of this video, however, I want you to stay tuned because I have a little surprise for you, and I can't wait to share it with you. All right, so quick, quick, like little bunnies, get yourself settled, and we will get cracking. I'm going to start with the Christmas story because I know what to expect on that and then we'll see what happens here. I've got some tools that I typically need to use. I know this one has staples and so what I like to use is um, needle nose pliers to kind of pull those out. Sometimes depending I have to use the gripper ones. I also have my Tim Holtz scissors. They're a little bit stronger, a little more industrial, but they have the nice uh, pointy tip and so I can get in and snip. Uh, snip thick threads and that kind of thing. Sometimes I use them to help pry up the staples and stuff too. And then I have my uh, Sharpie knife here, exacto knife, for anything that I might need to cut. Sometimes, you know, if it's glued, if the pages, the fly leaves are glued to the cover, I mean, you'd have to cut through that. So we're just gonna find out what, what what's going on inside. <laughs> yeah, so let me catch you up on where I am in my life. I'll try to speak in coherent sentences. Um, also, I'm going to explain as I go um, what I'm doing here. So because I know that there are staples here, I just kind of cut on either side of where I can see the outline of the staple and lift up the paper just so I know where I'm working. Now there are lots of people who like to save that little foil strip. To date, I have never done that. I just haven't been that worried about it. But the best way that I have heard to get that off is to use like a heat gun or maybe your blow dryer on very high heat and blow on it for a bit with the hot air and then that loosens the adhesive and then it should peel right up. But truthfully, the older the book, the better they seem to peel. So I'm gonna scoot closer here and scoot this closer to me. Okay, you can see the staple in here. And um, then I try to figure out how to get underneath it. Sometimes I use the X-Acto blade, but you know, these are not the strongest blade. But I try to get under there and just lift it up. That's why I tend to use like scissors. You need something flat and strong, but you don't wanna hurt yourself. Also, do beware that on some of these older books, especially like the old, vintage uh, children's readers and stuff. These staples are pretty rusty, so you don't want to be hurting yourself or getting poked with a rusty nail and getting tetanus. I am lucky because I got a tetanus booster about three years ago. We were doing some yard work. I thought it would be a really good idea. So <laughs> I'm up to date on my tetanus booster. But you definitely don't want to be poking yourself with rusty metal because that is not safe. Okay, once I have this up, I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in right here so you can see what I'm doing. Once I have them kind of pulled up, then I just go through with my needle nose pliers and try to straighten that because when you're pulling from this other side, it's easier to pull the staple out if the prongs are straight. Then we want to get under this side and kind of lift a little bit without hurting ourselves. 
don't want any casualties on camera. <laughs> no accidents, please. I'm going a little faster than I usually do because I am on camera. Sometimes the easiest way is just to grip this little piece on the back side and start to push it through to the front side. And then that, that gives you the lift you need on this side. See that? You see that? How it's sticking out right here? That gives you the lift so that you can get underneath the staple and pull it out just like that. So let's do that again. We're gonna just take this, these little prongs that are sticking out and get a hold of them with our pliers and push. And then it, see how it popped up over there? And since I've got quite a lot there, I probably don't need to worry about doing that to the other side. And that just helps it come out. This is one of the nicer spines. And then your little golden book, you get your two sections with, I believe, three sheets. One, two, three. Yep. And those are essentially, this is a signature and that's a signature. And then we'll be putting our pages in between. For those of you that are veterans, that's nothing new. But for those of you that are new, that's how that works. So yeah, um, while I'm filming this, today is the Friday that you saw the prior video. And we just got back two days ago from visiting our kids in Portland. Okay, this, I'm gonna show you here. You can see that they're all folded together, so I'm guessing there's a center staple or something, or stitches or something in the middle. As soon as I find the middle, I'll tell you. So we just got back from Portland. Yep, Staples. And uh, Portland, Vancouver area, where they are. That was fun, spent six days and did some fun stuff. And uh, then we drove home and then yesterday, which was Thursday, they flew in because not only do we have our my niece's wedding, but my son-in-law, his cousin, has a, he has a cousin who's also getting married this weekend. So we're gonna be doing wedding -y stuff. And then right after that, about three days later, I leave for Cancun. No, I leave for Cozumel. Let's see. I'm not sure is that stuck. Yeah, it looks like those staples are stuck into the spine. There's one. That one pulled free. The other two are still stuck in here. So we'll pull those out very carefully. Here we go. Okay, oh good. So this is the same thing. It's like one complete signature. One, we'll count the sheets. So counting the sheets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good. That means we don't have to add a ton of ton more sheets to that one. That's good. I really wasn't sure what to expect. And I'm guessing that this other little one, the lost little, the little lost angel is gonna come apart the same way. So I am trying to, uh, back to my topic, I am trying to get about three videos filmed in the few days that I have at home. <laughs> have, I think exactly a week <laughs> before I leave again. Ah, I'm feeling the pressure. But I uh, went down to the garage this morning and was looking through all the books and trying to figure out what did I want to use and which pages to include. Oh, okay, did you see that? I cut the stitches and then this just fell right out. But, and you'll see this a lot, It's they were stitched in, but then there's also still a staple to take out. But after that, it looks like there are three sections maybe. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, so I'm just hustling my buns <laughs> trying to get all this done. But also I really would like to be ahead of the game when I get back on the, on the Christmas stuff. And you know, I like Christmas. That's literally, besides summer, is Christmas is my other favorite time of the year. And I could be really content if we just went Christmas, summer, Christmas, summer. <laughs> 
That's not how the seasons work, at least not in my area. So there we go. Now, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, you get Christmas and summer at the same time. Oh, it looks like we got to pick our stitches. I don't want to use that. I think I want to use a much smaller pair of scissors. I found these at the Dollar Tree, so I'm going to use them until they're until I wear them out. But I like to get under there. They might not be pointy enough. Actually, you know what would work is a seam ripper. Yeah, just get out your seam ripper from your sewing kit if you have one. Or your mom has one that she hasn't used or whatever, or you find one at the thrift store, but that's the best thing for pulling out stitches is a seam ripper. That's why it was invented. Look at that. There we go. No, I forgot what I was telling you. So my younger daughter, daughter number two, we have to go on a mission of mercy. Uh oh to go on a mission of mercy for her today. Um, she and my her husband, my other son-in-law, number two, they went on a trip to Spain. They were gone for about 10 days. She came back, she's feeling sick, took the test, she's got COVID, and she's supposed to sing in the wedding on Sunday. <laughs> so, so far, she's still testing positive. We're gonna give it Today's Friday, right? So hopefully by tomorrow she should be testing negative because that should be well outside the outside the time frame. I know when we had it in Scotland, they were saying you really only need to be like five days. Five days test test after five days. So anyway, they keep shortening the window, which I guess is good, but also the virant is not as horrible, at least this current strain, as it was when it first hit hit the world. So, um, yeah, so she's sick, and so I told her I would take her some soup, hamburger soup, which is a family favorite. Normally I take them chicken noodle soup when they're sick, but I don't have time to cook right now. And I'd already planned to make uh, hamburger soup for uh, while well, Katie and Sam were here. Okay, now I gotta watch that I keep these in the right order. Okay, so where, oh, look at this. Well, that's interesting. So what they did on the in back page of each signature, this last page doesn't have a friend. They wrapped it around to hold everything in. Then they just have a few random pages in the middle. Who knows why? And then, <laughs> This front page here, they wrapped it around to the back to hold that section in, and then they sewed it. Well, that's interesting. Seems like a lot of work. Now, if you will notice, I decided to use the cover, if you'll recall, and it is beat up. This is torn, so guess what we're gonna put there? A pocket. So, all is not lost. There we go, that works really well. So I guess add a seam ripper to your supplies if you don't have one because sometimes that's just the right thing. Yeah, I better clip these or something so I don't lose track of the order. I think I'm just gonna clip them into the cover like that. Wow, this is going very quickly. I wasn't quite sure what to expect. <laughs> okay. Also, I have come up with an idea, as usual. My brain is always going. I think during this time while we're working on Christmas books, I'm going to read you guys at the end of every one a section of this story, the story of the other wise man. And I, this is one another one of my favorite Christmas stories. It's a little more involved. It's by Henry Van Dyke. It's completely fictitious. But it is a lovely story about the man who uh, kept looking for Jesus because he lost his friends and kept looking for him. It has a really lovely ending. So we're gonna just read a little section of that every time and hopefully we get it finished. It's been really fun as I go through all these books to read the different poems. I noticed in my last video I kept saying poems. To read the different poems and, uh, you know, the music, the songs, the stories, and just, I don't know. Well, that's okay. We were going to take it apart anyway. Oh, this has a similar structure. 
sewn, and I bet there's a staple hiding out in there somewhere. But I definitely don't want to tear the end papers. So we're going to go ahead and cut through. Let's see if that comes off. Come on, little fella. I have lots of fun Christmas stories. I like Christmas stories. Okay, what do we got here? I may have put the seam ripper away too soon. Let's see, we should pull, because they're all pretty much cut apart. You should just pull out. If they don't, then we need to go back and cut them so we don't rip through our pages. Okay, this is going to act like a seam ripper. I think I... I may have cut through this page here. Oh. Okay, oh, so this is the one that's going to give me trouble. Oh, I see. It's really, it's like they finished the knot right there. Okay, so we just kind of need to untie that knot or get past the knot. Pull this off. Pull these through. Get ready of all these little threads. Yeah, I did. I, I uh, split the page. <laughs> I'll have to patch that. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I love that little angel guy. He's so adorable. Okay, so we have one, two, three sheets, it looks like. <clears throat> three sheets there. And then, what's our next? The natural break. This is also glued to the spine, so they sew it together and then they glue it to the spine. So this piece of spine is what I've just removed so that we can get our pages to open. Oh, see they did the same thing, it's just two loose pages in the middle. Seems kind of weird, why would you do that? Just bizarre. <laughs> what do I know? I'm not a book publisher. Maybe that's a standard practice in the publishing world. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm gonna have to reinforce, reinforce these because they're all kind of splitting and um, there's some holes. So we'll make sure we do that. We don't want our special book falling apart, even though we just took it apart. <laughs> So why didn't they just, I mean, this could have even just been its own little page. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, good, we got that apart. Now, now what do we do? <laughs> this is a really clean cover. I'm very surprised, very clean. So we'll, um, when I get ready to do the make the covers and assemble them. I'll be trimming all this random stuff off and trimming off this piece of spine and um, cleaning that up before I make new spines and widen it. Um, this one is such a nice big size. Also, see I had the cap. Where'd my cap go? Oh dear. Oh, here it is. There we go. Got that covered so we don't hurt ourselves. Now let's see, I had a few um, a few pages that I already knew for sure that I wanted to go in here. So let's see, because this is going to be an oversized book, that's going to make it really easy to, to use these big pages. And I know I had talked in the previous video that these with the story might not work, but I think they will if I fold them this way. Also, look at this, the land of the visit. There's 
there's Jerusalem. And Bethlehem is right outside of Jerusalem. So I think that's pretty appropriate for an angel angel that's going to go visit, go visit the manger. I'm going to fold that one in half. And then there's this map, the land of the first Christmas. Isn't that cool? And I think the colors go very nicely. So we're going to use that one too. I don't know if I'll trim, yeah, I should probably trim that off up there. I'll do that off camera or I'll just sit here and pick it off. <laughs> coming off. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's the glue. And this came out of those uh, giant, the giant books that said Christmas on the cover. I went back because I realized there were pages in both that I wanted to use, so I, I went back and, and uh, kind of re-evaluated. So I know I wanted those, and I like that this is the song. It came upon the midnight clear, and I think the colors with the blue and the green. That will be lovely. So these big oversized pages are perfect. And then this one is um, poems. This is part of another song. I liked the poems. Of course it's gonna, they won't line up exactly, but it's gonna fold right in the middle of that one. I feel like I'm low energy. I promise I'm not. Got a lot on my mind, a lot of things to do. Oh, and also on the way back from our trip, our uh, our van, the maintenance required light came on. So we had to take that in yesterday. Plus it had apparently blown a fuse or something because our radio just randomly went out while we were there on our trip and the car charger thing also went out. So they were connected. Now I gotta figure out some big colored sheets of paper. And I know I had another one in this pile over here I wanted to use. Anyway, so yeah, cars in the shop. I had quite the busy day yesterday. I'll just, um, I'm gonna thumb through these really quick to get to the one I wanted. Here's an angel one. Here's an angel one. I tried to find some with angels, but I don't even have paper really with angels. There's the shepherds. Angel. I found a couple of other books out there in the garage that I hadn't shown you on camera, so I decided to, to uh, pull pages out of those as well. I like this. We always kind of forget about Joseph, don't we? He's a pretty, pretty important piece of this story. He was confused. And there's an angel page. There's an angel page. There's an angel page. Here's an angel page. So remember we have two that feature angels, the little lost angel and this one the littlest angel. But there was one that had, there's another one. Oh yeah, this is a nice big one. Yeah, isn't that pretty? This is already um, folded. So, and I love, love the picture of the wise men here. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna use that one with this. had several that were already folded, but not all of them are going with this book. Yeah, that, okay, we're gonna use those two. There's another angel page. And you guys saw that. I think this is cool. I have no idea where it's gonna wind up, but I think it's really cool. This one, because these little boxes remind me of the present that he gave. Isn't that cute? Okay, let's see. Oh, there was an angel one. So I can use these angels between the two different stories and whatever, the two different books that I'm making, and then whatever I don't use, then I can, I can use in um, the other two books. 
Look at this one has angel figurines in the background. I realize that's a pie, but I liked the angel figurines. <laughs> I really like this. I think this will go in one of the other books. Okay, so that's all of those. And then let's see, we need to take apart this one because we're gonna use pages and take apart this one, which I found I'd forgotten in my little little uh, section with the smaller books. We have these and these can be folded into the other stories. So that's what we wanna do there. So my little angel, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Just slide these in here, seven for that one at the moment. I don't need to do these on camera because it's not really gonna you already just watched me do one and you don't need to watch me do more so a second thought okay so let me set those over there do those later now I'm gonna grab some other pages that I have I had this one that came out of a toll painting book isn't that beautiful and then um, I have some bigger pieces of paper here because that's an oversized book. Like I have this ginormous accounting ledger thing. So we definitely want at least one of those to go in the littlest angel. Put Mary over here. Sorry, I'm groaning. <laughs> Goodness. Let me put that one there. And I have these big doilies. They're huge. Look at that. 12 inch round. I have this giant deco edged paper that has mauve on some of the edges and purple. And I picked it up so I can include that into these big size journals. I have a couple other things here that are that are not quite the right color scheme. And then I have these things I found at the thrift store a couple years ago. These are really old paper placemats. I realize they're for a shower, but I like the bells. I like the gold. Crinkle, crinkle, rustle, rustle. <laughs> but I just think these would be really cool as a giant page in one of these big Christmas journals. So even though it has umbrellas, we're gonna go with it. Let's do that. It's kind of a similar idea to a doily. Let's see, how about you? Actually, I should be measuring that against the actual signature. Measure here. Oh wow, that's gonna be really, really wide. So I can just fold this one back. And then I'll have to trim that down, obviously. This one. Might have to trim that one down. It's just so cool. I love it. I love it. One, two. This one is going to be hard because you can't really get um, colored paper in big, big sizes, you know. Let's get a doily. I thought these were already open. Guess not. Well, how handy. <laughs> Get to be the first one to open it. Is there one that's already loose? 
Oh, come on. Eh, can't get it. There it is. There it is. Get it. Okay, there's that one. I hope that's not rustling too loudly on camera. I forget sometimes that that happens. Okay, so we're going to fold that one. Yep, he's going to need a little trim, too. Sometimes they fold them up, but the thing is about that is this just rips, so I think it'd just be better if you trimmed it. That's my opinion on that. Um, let's put this back here between those guys, and then... have a couple of these eight and a half by 11 pads and then I have these coffee dyed sheets that I did a long time ago. I don't know why this has holes in it. It doesn't bother me too much but this is essentially an eight and a half by 11 sheet so I guess the question is, is do I want to make a hinge and hinge those. I'm gonna just tear that off. Hinge those together or do I want to fold them in half because folded in half they're going to be really short. I really honestly couldn't tell you what I want to do. I'm going to do two, two green and apparently one blue because that's all I have <laughs> and one red. That way if I decide to hinge I can do that. Okay so there's those. Then, so I have these two pads. There's a lot of old fashioned Victorian Santa kind of thing. That's cute. But the blues and the greens are what's in there. Merry Christmas to you might work. Let's see what else we got here. That's pretty too, isn't it? Lots of Santa. And you know, I was just at Hobby Lobby, so I bought these. This one I bought quite a while ago because I used it in the ones I made in 2018. So that tells you something. Ooh, that's neat. This one's from 2018. And then I bought the plaid one. Did I buy the plaid one at the same time or did I buy it the next year? This is either 2018 or 19. They never put the copyright dates on there. Now another thing I can do is hinge these pages. This is just the loose open stock. I have a couple floating around in here that, that I liked. They won't go in this journal. I want some blues and greens. As much as I love my red plaid, there's one. Surely we have something prettier. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm not sure that you can get any of these right now because I went and looked and that was all, well, they didn't have a lot of the Christmas stuff out yet, but it was pretty sparse. Do we have any blue plaid? Come on. I know the Scots like their blue plaid. I was just there, I just saw it. <laughs> There's more green. Okay, no blue. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see, and then I have some 12 by 12. Okay. I have this old thing that I'm not sure is really gonna have anything in it, but it's pieces of other stuff, plus whatever was left from the original notepad. So. Oh, it's kind of cool. Come back here, book. Let's see with that. Yeah. Nope, too tan. That's too bad. 
And this one has 12 Days of Christmas, so that won't do. Some of these were thrifted. Some of these I pulled out of other pads that I know it would work. That is too rusty. Not at all in the right spirit of things, you know. Of course, oh, that one is double-sided. This one might actually work. It's just got an interesting little pattern to it. It goes like this. But that's kind of like a tree in the forest with the snowflakes. But look, look at these trees. Look at how that looks. That might just work. By Jove, it just might work. Interesting, I would not have expected that. Yeah, because the style, whatever that style is, I think that might work. Cool, and it's two-sided, thank goodness. Okay, like I said, I just threw a bunch of random papers in here as I run across them. And, and truly, a lot of these were thrifted from the thrift store. Um, are there any from this original pad? <laughs> That's the question of the day. These, these here at the back I did buy. I do you remember that? Where are they? Like that one. This one. I think those came from Joann's, don't quote me. Don't quote me, it's been too long. This one has reindeer, not right. Reindeer, not right. That one might. That's, that's it, I got three pages left of this pad. So that might, it's kind of got a Nordic, Nordic feel to it. This is back when Michaels actually had paper in their paper section, because that's, I'm pretty sure I bought that at Michaels. That was a long time ago. Long time ago. And I think it might have been on closeout when I bought it. Okay, there's that. So let's see, I got a big mess here. I need to get that out of my way. So I'll have to do some thinking because here's my pages and I'm going to want, I'm gonna to have to fold these around and like maybe hinge or so overlap kind of situation and figure out how I want these pages to go. That's cool. I really never thought I'd get to use that. I'm not very happy about that. And then we have these guys. Okay, so that is what we figured out for the littlest angel as of now. Um, yeah, so not sure how many of that equals. I don't want to sit here and count them on camera for you. Let's see what else we got. Let's see, that's the back of the book. Here's the front of the book. Okay, that's good. And then, of course, remember any cutoffs or whatever scraps can go in there. So hopefully they all work together. So let's see how many of these work with the little lost angel. And then we're gonna be about out of time. Mm, need to lay that somewhere. I have nowhere. Okay, and this one is kind of more blue and red and yellow. Cute. But the nice thing is that these pages can be trimmed down to fit. So, like maybe we could cut off more of the pie. <laughs> I, I would do it sideways, I guess. Not so sure about that pie. This one's pretty. And on the back it has this, but we can cover that up. Let's see, I wanna fold it. Do I wanna fold it in half? Yeah, I think I do. I do wanna fold that in half. Oops, and that was not straight. I'm gonna scoot that up. Scoot that out of my way. Whoops. Okay. Having a problem here. Okay. Sorry. I keep grunting. Not a very nice noise to listen to. This one. There's one. There's two. That one's a no at the moment. 
This one is pretty. Oh, is that neat with the wreath? So that'll be, that'll tie in very nicely. And then this one, here's the angel coming to Mary, which may or may not end up in this one. It might end up in the other one. One of these others, the story of Christmas. Let's see, does it talk about the angel coming to Mary? Somewhere right here. Yep, there he is. Okay, you go in there. And then we had this pretty angel and a tree. Probably put one of these in each, each one. I think I'd like that one in there. And then this, isn't that just lovely? Adoration of the Shepherds by Bartolomeo y Murillo. Um, there's a little bit more over here with Joseph and some other stuff that got cut off. It does have the angels. Put that in there. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we had these two. Yeah, I think this is going to go with the littlest angel because I can hinge it onto one of those other sheets. And then that'll be a full page. And then I'll fold this one. And then it's got the pictures of the kids, too. They're in a stable with the horsies and the little tree. A kid. I guess it's not kids. Just one of them. But I think this one will be okay in this book. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And then we want some red and green. I do have other coffee dyed pages. So I can find yellow, I'm sure, and then I don't know what my shades of blue look like. If I can find a blue one, then I will. I will definitely go with that. And then I had. I think I want this one, this beautiful paper to go with this one. Just, I don't know, just the style of the Mary and the style of these pictures, I think would just be really pretty together. And there was another one or two I was thinking of over here. This is what I do. I start making a mess. I'm going to put that one in with this, the story of Christmas. So, see this one also had nativity scenes in it, and I love that church. Isn't that beautiful? I guess I should show it to you the right direction. Inspiration and writing space. I like this one too because it looks like, I mean, I realize it's a German town at night at Christmas, but it reminds me <laughs> of the idea of Bethlehem waiting. And so I think with the colors and stuff, that one could also go in this book, The Story of Christmas. It's a town waiting for the birth of Christ. Mm, my on screen where you can see. I don't like that one. There was a brown one. I thought I could have imagined it. Where was it? <laughs> thought I had another one with a brown object. I'm I'm going through. There it is. That's the one. That's the one I was thinking of. I thought would go very nicely in here. So that's basically what I'm gonna do, is go through and kind of divide these up and hope that I don't have too many. And then I will take apart those other two books and put those pages in, and then we may need some things that are more solid after that. 
you know, that don't compete with so much imagery. But I have lots of cards and other fun little things. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, possibly a yellow. Well, definitely yellow would be five. I don't know about blue. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this one had a lot of pages. So because of that, we may not need to get as many alternative pages. Or I may need to find some stuff that is blank, you know, very plain. Not blank, plain to, to intersperse. Okay, so that one's well on its way. These two will need more. I'll just continue dividing them up. And then, oh, everybody was, except for the littlest angel, I already got that one, but everybody's getting one of these. I have to trim it down. But by the time I trim it down, you're gonna see mostly just this. Won't that be cool? So let's give you one of these. Mmm, it's so pretty. Let's put that one in here. This is mostly words. A little lost angel. This one in here. This one's getting quite a few things, and then I may go ahead and stick this one in with the littlest angel. So it has two, one for each signature. Okay, that's that's a good start, huh? Okay, let us. Oh, first, I gotta talk about my surprise. My surprise. And my surprise is I'm just gonna do a surprise giveaway, flash giveaway. The reason for this is, as you saw on camera, I had quite a few copies of quite a few books that is useful, say, if I want to, for this book, make the journal, but then make pockets or tags or whatever that, um, that match and can go in the pockets. It's really nice to have a double of that. So sometimes if I find a really nice copy, I make it the journal. And if there's one that's torn up, I use that more for pockets and tags to accent what I'm putting in. But I had quite a few of these, had quite a few of these. And then I discovered I had a double of this, this cookbook that I thumbed through last week. And so surprise, surprise, I'm going to do a giveaway just because I want to. And so it's going to have The Night Before Christmas, The Christmas Story, and The Ideals Christmas Book. And that's what I will send the lucky winner. So down below, what would I like to have you put in the comments down below? Tell me your favorite Christmas custom or tradition. Something you like to do every year or that you always did growing up and maybe you can't do now for various reasons or you used to do with your kids or anyway your favorite christmas tradition custom family what have you or if you don't have one yet what would you like to start okay so put that down in the comments and then i will draw i don't know when because i'm going on a trip <laughs> but anyway put it on the comments I, these are both going to air while i'm gone so i'm going to have to draw after i get back so let's see um, I leave on the 2nd, come back on the 9th, so like the 11th, I think that's November 11th, that Friday. I don't have a calendar in front of me, it's on my phone, so I can't tell. Um, yeah, so we'll do that, okay? We'll draw on the 11th. I should probably write myself a note. I don't have anything to write on. Oh, yes I do, I have this one. We'll just erase what's on there. So this is the flash giveaway, um, flash. giveaway uh, for Christmas. Announcing whatever day this comes out. Drawing. Winner on November 11th. And um, favorite Christmas custom. Custom or tradition. I'm writing very 
sloppily because I'm in a hurry. Okay, so that's it. I have to remind myself, but that's what you're gonna get, okay? So, these three books, yay! That's nice, that's nice to share out of the abundance. That's why God blesses, so you can share with other people in need. And I'm not saying y'all are in need, but it is nice to share. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. Okay, so let's start reading the story of the other wise man. This is our inspiration for the next few videos. Okay, now this particular copy has a lovely introduction by Leo Bascaglia and then the preface and then the actual story. And while it is very nice to read the preface and the introduction, I am not going to read them to you. I'm just going to read the story because part of it was written by Henry Van Dyke and why he, you know, he explains why he wrote the book. But you can get this copy <laughs> and read it for yourself. Um, here's your ISBN number if you're looking for that. There it is. And of course, it's the story of the other wise man, Henry Van Dyke, published by Religion. Hmm. Is that really true? That's the publisher? Ballantine Books. Ballantine Books. That's who it's. Okay. So, here we go. Who seeks for heaven alone to save his soul may keep the path but will not reach the goal. While he who walks in love may wander far, yet God will bring him where the blessed are. You know the story of the three wise men of the East and how they traveled from far away to offer their gifts at the manger cradle in Bethlehem. But have you ever heard the story of the other wise man who also saw the star in its rising and set out to follow it, yet did not arrive with his brethren in the presence of the young child Jesus? Of the great desire of this fourth pilgrim, and how it was denied, yet accomplished in the denial, of his many wanderings and the probations of his soul, of the long way of his seeking, and the strange way of finding the one whom he sought, I would tell the tale as I have heard fragments of it in the Hall of Dreams, in the Palace of the Heart of Man. Chapter 1. The Sign in the Sky. In the days when Augustus Caesar was master of many kings and Herod reigned in Jerusalem, there lived in the city of Ecbatana, among the mountains of Persia, a certain man named Artaban, the Median. His house stood close to the outermost of the seven walls which encircled the royal treasury. From his roof, he could look over the rising battlements of black and white and crimson and blue and red and silver and gold to the hill where the summer palace of the Parthian emperors glittered like a jewel in a sevenfold crown. Around the dwelling of Artaban spread a fair garden, a tangle of flowers and fruit trees watered by a score of streams descending from the slopes of Mount Orontes and made musical by innumerable birds. But all color was lost in the soft and odorous darkness of the late September night and all sounds were hushed in the deep charm of its silence, save the splashing of the water, like a voice half sobbing and half laughing under the shadows. High above the trees, a dim glow of light shone through the curtained arches of the upper chamber, where the master of the house was holding counsel with his friends. He stood by the doorway to greet his guests, a tall, dark man of about 40 years, with brilliant eyes set near together under his broad brow, and firm lines graven around his fine, thin lips. The brow of a dreamer and the mouth of a soldier, a man of sensitive feeling but inflexible will, one of those who, in whatever age they may live, are born for inward conflict and life of quest. His robe was of pure white wool thrown over a tunic of silk, and a pointed cap with long lapels at the side rested on his flowing black hair. It was the dress of the ancient priesthood of the Magi called the Fire Worshippers. Welcome, he said in his low, pleasant voice as one after another entered the room. Welcome, Abdus. Peace be with you, Rhodaspes and Tigranius, and with you, my father, Abgarus. You are all welcome, and this house grows bright with the joy of your presence. So we have to quit there because our time is up. Yep, so tune in next time so we can continue reading. If I only read five minutes at a time, it's gonna take us a while. So next time the video may have to be shorter so we can read longer. <laughs> okay guys, we're gonna close here. Here's what we're working on. Okay, just to recap, here's what we're working on. 
And we're going to be reading the story of the other wise man as we finish each week. Okay, so I'm going to work on taking these two books apart and then um, continue trying to find papers and things for each of these. And then we'll be back. And I don't know what we'll do next time, but we'll do something cool. <laughs> It'll be great. All right, guys, talk to you in the next video. And until next time, be inspired and do something creative today. Bye-bye.